started. Yep. Uh, here we go. All right. So, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Willie Willis. I'm the primary maintainer of Botania and Patchouli. Um, so, today, today I'll be talking about uh, Botania's journey from being a Forge mod to being a Fabric mod to kind of doing both at the same time now. Um, so, I'll talk about just basically the whole timeline and process that we went through for that. Um, and some general thoughts on what it takes to maintain a mod, a large mod at that for both um, platforms at the same time. Um, so it's not really a like, you should do things this way kind of talk. It's more like a, this is how we did it kind of talk. Um, so first I'll just go over a bit of brief history about Batania. Um, so Batania is a Forge 1.6 mod originally. Um, though it quickly ported to 1.7. Um, and then it's just stayed there all that time, all the way up till now, basically. Um, I started maintaining it around 1.8. Um, so the 1.7 to 1.8 port was basically when I started working on Batania. Um, and in 1.14, Batania started depending on another mod uh, from Vasky called Patchouli, which is the mod that implements a lot of the guidebooks you see here today, um, as well as the Lexica Batania. And one thing that is unique about Patchouli is that it's pretty small and a lot of its code is self-contained and doesn't really touch vanilla that much. Um, so we use it as a, lo a lot as like a test bed. Um, for example, when we first wanted to think about porting to Fabric, we actually poured Patchouli first um, late in 2019. So that's like 1.15 around that time. Um, that was like how I got my feet wet in the fabric world, basically. And at the time, uh, MojMap was available. It's, this is a, a note: is MojMap was available, but the license was ambiguous, so people kind of stayed away from that at that point. Um, so, yeah. So, as I mentioned, um, Petroli is kind of like our test bed, and that, you'll see that happen again later in this talk. Um, so the process of pouring patchouli to fabric uh, was largely manual because um, the mod is so small. Uh, the, uh, what was I going to say? It was just basically doing all the MCP to yarn renames by hand, essentially. Um, so that was kind of like how that worked. Um, let's see. What's next? Yeah, so back to Batania. Um, so next we'll talk about how, like, how we originally started uh, porting to Fabric. Um, basically, after porting Patchouli, I'm like, okay, this is not too bad. Uh, it's kind of a nice platform to use. Um, so around 1.16, uh, this is like in the middle of 2020, um, I started thinking about porting Batania. Um, someone on the Discord is basically asked, uh, <laughs> Uh, when it, when, it, when is Batania coming to Fabric? And I basically said, stay tuned, TM. Um, so what something that that we did was, in preparation for this, wasn't we didn't just, just fork a new branch and then start going right away, right? So one thing that we did was you can start preparing for multi-platform porting by working in your existing code base. So we did lots of work in Forge before even starting a Fabric branch. And this includes things like um, getting rid of Forge APIs that we didn't need or want to use. Um, so object holder, you might some of you might know from Forge, um, or the Forge registry APIs, reading from those, um, or the at event bus subscriber annotations things like that, that that the Forge people tell you are good practice to use, but they're not actually required. Uh, we got rid of all those and just moved back to the plain van vanilla uh, APIs. And one thing that was good here actually was um, Forge added mix-in support, which is really crucial. Uh, so we moved a bunch of our reflection uh, to, to mix-ins, uh, to accessor mix-ins, um, and some little uh, code patches that we had to do to make sense as well. Um, and then at this time, this was still MCP and Yarn, so two different kinds of name sets. Uh, so we added some utility methods uh, 
to smooth over like the number of times that these uh, platform specific names have to be specified. Like for example, we had new resource location Botania X everywhere in the code. So then we just added this method called prefix that return that just adds the Botania domain as a resource location. So that way we don't have to say the name resource location in 500 places in the code. We just access this one helper method. Um, all right, so this was, so the takeaway here is that you want to do platform, um, platform specific, or you, you want to do pre preparatory work on your current platform. Um, it's because while you're doing that, you can still run your mod and test it and make sure it doesn't crash, right? So all the time while this was going on, we made things, uh, we made sure that things still worked. All right, so after all of this was done, uh, we actually started the work. Um, so in July of 2020, uh, we started the Fabric branch of Batania. And what we used was a tool called Yarnforge by Ramid. Um, I think he's here, actually. Uh, what it does is it's a Forge Gradle plugin. Um, you just dump it into your Forge workspace. You run the task, and then it spits out yarn code in another directory. Um, and then from there, it's basically replacing all the accesses to Forge APIs one by one, um, slowly to Fabric. And this actually progressed for a couple months. And this actually got stable enough that we were able to run it on Vasky's patron server. Um, in 1.16, though we never actually released um, Batania for Fabric 1.16. Um, so another thing to note about, about this process was um, it, it's good to work systematically. Uh, this, this doesn't apply just to porting across platforms, right? It applies to porting to new versions of Minecraft as well. Um, some things, uh, sometimes I, something I see a lot of beginning modders do when they try to update their, their mods to newer versions, they just update their Gradle file, and then they open random files and just start fixing whatever compile errors they see. And that is very slow, and it also is very soul draining, right? It always, it seems like there's so much to do whenever Mojang breaks some API and you get 3,000 uh, errors, right? So one thing is you should try to eliminate entire classes of problems, right? So the thing I mentioned earlier, where in Yarn, some, uh, the resource location is called identifier, you make one commit that does that replacement everywhere, right? Um, or if Mojang moves some method somewhere else, you make a commit that replaces that everywhere in your code. Um, and by that, you automatically eliminate entire classes of problems, thousands of compile errors at once. And then what's left is the actual stuff you have to fix, which is usages of platform-specific APIs. Um, so, all right, so this continued on for several months, actually, um, on the side. Uh, so one, so as we started doing this, was we, several, we noticed that several things started cropping up um, that were painful in this process. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so while while we were doing this in late 2020, it's not like the Forge branch was frozen, right? We still had bug fixing, um, some minor feature work, and also like porting to newer versions of 1.16, because as we know, like 1.16.2 messed everything up, right? Um, so there was development in parallel between Forge and Fabric, and this exposed some issues in in our workflow. Yeah, so basically how we handled this was Forge and Fabric were separate branches in the Git repository. And we we had a way of, we basically had two different ways of propagating fixes back and forth between them. So on Petrulli, we would cherry pick the commits back and forth. Um, and on Botania, we would do merges. Um, don't ask me why it's different. I don't remember <laughs> either, <laughs> but they were. And both of these schemes are non-satisfactory. Um, 
if you cherry pick commits one at a time from Forge to Fabric, you can miss things. Um, you have to list all of them using weird Git magic. Uh, for merge merges, you see you get merge commits all over your log, your commit log, which is annoying. And once you fall behind, it's very hard to catch up. So one thing that happened was our Fabric branch actually got behind the Forge branch because of some refactoring and 1.16.2, a bunch of other stuff. And it got behind by about one to two months. And every time I went back and tried to merge it back into Fabric to pick up all the changes, it would just conflicts everywhere, right? Um, between MCP and Yarn or various other things would, would cause tons of merge conflicts. And this was actually the most soul crushing part of the support. Um, so at, at one moment, uh, at one time, I had to merge the forge branch in chunks of of commit of several commits at a time, just so I could um, keep track of all the conflicts that were going on. So uh, you see in the, uh, you might have to zoom in on this one, but uh, in the commit log, you see merge forge one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up till 16. So I had to do 16 commits uh, merges in a row to get Fabric caught up to Forge. Um, so that was really, really tough. Uh, but after that, things were pretty good. Right, so now we, we get on to the uh, 1.17 era. So when this happened, um, uh, they changed the license for MojMap. Uh, you, you guys might remember. And at the time, Forge uh, basically said, OK, we're, we're fine with this license now, so we're going to switch to MojMap. Um, so we considered the fact that like we're forced to use MojMap on Forge anyways, so we might as well switch Fabric to MojMap as well, just so our merge conflicts don't <laughs> aren't, aren't as ugly and terrible. Um, at least the names of the things will match. Uh, right? So the Another thing was Forge 1.17 um, actually broke mixins for quite a while. Um, so the release was delayed for that. And because of that, at this point, Fabric actually took over as the upstream, um, as the upstream for Botania. And yeah, um, new new features and bug fixes would go into, into Fabric while we were waiting for Forge. And Forge ended up. We never. Uh, we ended up never actually making Forge Batania 1.17, um, just because like no one was really interested in it because Mojang cut half the content out of it. Uh, though I was not looking forward to more back and forth merge hell, like merging all the changes from Fabric back into Forge whenever we updated that. Right. So, I guess the the next thing is the biggest thing that helped. Right. Is the multi loader system. And basically, it's a Gradle setup that Dark Hacks and Jared told us about. And it's essentially where you have a module that only depends on vanilla code. Against uh, It's compiled against vanilla with raw mode map. Um, here's a diagram that's quite helpful. So here's vanilla at the top. And in the middle, uh, we have what I call the xplat or cross-platform module. And it only depends on vanilla code. And then you would have two gradual modules that depend on the XPlat code. And then it can also depend on your specific platform, so Forge or Fabric. Um, so in, in a lot of the terminology online, you'll see common. Um, some other people use that. But I think that's kind of confusing. So I use the word cross-plat or XPlat. Um, so basically, we started doing this experiment um, in 2022, uh, so very um, early this year. And as before, right, there was some preparation work that we could do purely in Fabric before we ever start doing this whole craziness, which is um, doing things like removing at environment or at site only, right? Because you can't name those things, uh, those annotations, you can't use them in cross-platform code. Um, there, there are other things. You can check the commit logs if you're, if you're interested. Um, so one important thing that you need when you do this is sometimes the XPlat code needs to 
call back into the platform. For the the one example of this is in Batania, there's we have an add-on called Garden of Glass, which is like the skyblock mode. Right. So we have to change some behaviors when that mod is loaded. So how do we from this code, uh, this XPlat module, we all we can only talk to vanilla. So how do we say, is this mod loaded right now? Um, so we came up with this uh, system where you can down call from XPlat code back into the platform. Um, so basically, we have this interface called iXplat Abstractions. It's kind of a bad name, but it, <laughs> that's that's what it is. Um, and this interface has a method called isModLoaded. And then we have two implementations of the interface, once for each platform, which forwards the call to the appropriate place. Um, so for Fabric, it's Fabric Loader isModLoaded. And for Forge, it's ModList isModLoaded. And everything that is cross-platform is handled this way. So if I need to fire an event, I go through here. If I need to get a uh, capability or API, I go through this. Lots of things go through here. But um, I guess like it's it's scoped in that um, every method in this in this interface is something we specifically need for the mod to work. And it's actually not there's quite a few methods, but it's actually not too big. Uh, it's not thousands of lines of loader specific abstractions. Um, right. So now that we had this like setup in mind, it's time to start migrating, right? So what we did was we took our working fabric code. This, this is our current fabric code that works perfectly, and we dumped it all into the fabric uh, module in this picture, or in this previous picture. We dumped it all into here. And then we made an empty shell for Forge and cross-platform. Um, and then we, what we did was we so slowly sliced parts out of the Fabric module and moved them into uh, the cross-platform module. And as I mentioned before, what's good about these incremental changes right, is you can do it bit by bit, and you can test every single step to make sure you're still compiling, your mod still works, um, it doesn't crash. Um, so you, we kind of did that for several months, um, for a few weeks probably. Um, months is probably an overestimation until as much as possible we had everything moved out into the cross-platform module where it only depends on vanilla or this IXplat abstractions thing. So this was like several weeks of work. And <laughs> what's funny is, is we... The end state is kind of the same, right? We started with a fabric only mod and we spent two months working and now we have a fabric only mod in the end, right? Um, but this is not useless in that we have a strong abstraction boundary now where we have a list in that IXplat abstractions uh, interface. We have a list one by one of every single thing we have to implement to get this mod working on Forge again, right? So the Forge work is actually very clear from now on. It's go through that interface, go through every single method, and implement it on Forge. And that is actually very, was actually very smooth um, because, because everything was all in one place. So we, we implement all those methods, and then we did all, uh, hooked up all the initialization, so like all the bootstrapping startup stuff that is platform specific. Um, you have to do that again, of course. And and then we got Forge working. Um, so let me see. Yeah, so basically what happened was our, we basically ported to Fabric and then back to Forge. But the, for, the second like back to Forge part was way faster um, because we had a list of everything that a short list of everything that we needed from the platform itself. And, and I guess one thing that is important that ran through this common thread is MojMap, um, because it allows us to use one set of names for everything. And I, I hear that there you can hack things to use Yarn, though I haven't tried. And it's, it's probably super hacky, so we'll, we'll probably stick with MojMap for this in the future. Um, all right, uh, so, so now that leads us to where we are today. And 
it's actually very, very nice. So before, if you wanted to change gameplay, you would make a change in one branch and then merge it into the other branch, right? Now you just make one change in the cross-platform module and there's no merging back and forth. We just have 1.18.x branch, so no more dash fabric, dash forge uh, branch names. And I guess one thing I wanted to uh, talk about is things that I think make but make this made this process easier for Batania, because um, not all mods would um, not all mods might be able to follow this um, this kind of process that we did. So for Batania, what made it special is first of all, Batania is pretty feature complete. Um, so there's low churn in the code. Every so often we we add new features like these arbitrary tater models you see, um, small features every so every now and then, but overall the the HUAD is feature complete. And second of all, in our code, we emphasize staying close to vanilla. So using vanilla's abstractions when possible, um, like we use iInventory or whatever the new name is now. Um, yeah, so we try to keep our code close to vanilla so it can be shared as much as possible. And third, we use ModeMap. I mentioned this, but it provides a common way of naming things across all the platforms. Um, next is, uh, I also mentioned this kind of before, is Mixin allows us to keep a lot of our vanilla ASM hooks in the cross-platform module, uh, where we don't have to implement it twice, once in Forge JavaScript ASM, or and then again in Mixin. So that's a that's a big thanks to the Forge people for being willing to add Mixin. Um, and then finally, uh, one thing. Uh, wait, for whoever is passing by to pass by. Okay. He's a talking uh, so, here. If you want to listen, you're welcome to. Um, so the we, last we've thing. Been doing a thing. So lastly, we I think the most important thing actually on this list is there's the quote unquote political will from the maintainers to make this happen. Um, there, I'm good. By, by, yeah, if you don't feel like porting it, nothing's going to happen either way. Yeah. So, so um, one thing that's this whole multi-loader thing, what it relies on is you have to be in the same repository as the first party dev team, right? If you're like Create, where it's a separate org, separate repo, separate team, um, you can't really do this, right? You have to do merge, you have to do merges from upstream, right? So you have to be willing to have the first party team take you on um, and allow this to happen essentially in the same repository. Um, right, so I'm going to open the question thing now. I have, I have like one more slide, but if people want to start asking their questions, um, no, no. So this is just a fun, fun kind of thing. So some interesting stats on the code size of Batania. Um, so this is the cross-platform module. There's 67.8 thousand lines of Java, lots of JSON. Though most of that is generated, and the you can see that the loader or platform-specific line, uh, Java line count is actually pretty low comparatively. Um, that's so 88% of all Batania code is reliant only on vanilla. And then the remaining 12% is pretty evenly split between Forge and Fabric. And most of that is just like initialization, uh, registering of event handlers, and also uh, integrations. So JEI and Curios are Forge only. So their integration code obviously belongs in the Forge uh, module. And then same for EMI or trinkets, et cetera. Right, so wait, I thought Curios was fabric and trinkets was forge. Uh oh. Oops. Nope. Trinkets. I'm not sure. Probably. I'm not sure though. I could be wrong. Uh Curios. Uh Curios is on Forge. They did have a fabric version, but Trinkets kinda like um is kinda like the successor to it on Fabric. Yeah. Um okay. So... Oh yeah, Bobbles was the Forge one. Oh yeah, Bo well, Bobbles preceded Curios, so Bobbles is what we used um, before one thirteen, and yeah. then as yeah. kind of like disappeared. So <laughs> yeah, 
All right, so just some closing thanks um, to the Batonia team. So that's Hugh, Brielle, Winfie, and myself uh, for helping maintain this mod. Uh, thanks to Blame Jared and Dark Hacks for teaching us about uh, the multi-loader system, and also to all of the VIPs and patrons that, who helped test the fabric reports. Uh, so thank you all. And then one last thing is that we are commissioning a retexture of Batania because the current textures are 112 textures and they kind of look ugly now. Um, so we're uh, Artemis and Valkyrie are um, retexturing the entire mod in the modern style. So feel free to check out our booth or go to bataniamod.net slash retexture. Stop purring! And to learn more about Thank the you. textures. Yeah. So, so now is the question time. Uh, I have a couple like preemptive questions that I'm just going to answer for, uh, out, out of the gate just to, because uh, I foresee this, uh, these questions. So first is, will X other Vasky mod get a fabric port? Um, the, the short answer is probably not. Uh, if you're a developer and you're interested, you can talk to us. The short answer, um, the, the other side of the answer is that each of the large mods for Vasquez mods or Violet Moon is maintained by separate teams. So I don't, I don't touch Quark or Psy at all. I just do Batania and Petroli. So each one will have to make their own decision um, on this front. And I think Vasquez is mo mostly focused on Forge. So Quark Fabric is not likely, at least not in this multi-loader form. You can do manual merges, but so far we have this uh, branch sitting around and no one has touched it. So um, evidently the demand is not too high. Uh, and then the second question that I foresee is why aren't you using architecture? Right. So if you don't know, architecture is kind of a system that allows you to do this kind of multi-loader, multi-platform kind of thing. Um, and I guess my thinking behind this was this is something that I've learned over the years of porting or making mods for Minecraft is that core dependencies are risky. Um, so we mentioned this just now, but there used to be a time when Botania just was blocked because Bobbles did not update, right? So we had to wait for Bobbles or do it ourselves, and then we could port Botania. And I didn't want to stake the lives of the mod on a third party compatibility later. And because that thing can go away or stop being maintained at any time, right? Um, and the surface for potential bugs with architecture is what the hell is a lot higher, right? Because architecture has to implement a lot of APIs that everyone wants. Um, with with our whole uh, IX abstractions thing, we implement just what we want, right? Um, no more, no less. And it's it's lighter weight. Um, there's less Gradle hackery because. Architecture uses some weird loom thing, I think. Um, but yeah, so we, we gladly accept dependencies for integrations, right? Like JEI or EMI. But Batania itself does not require any other mod for core functionality other than Patchouli, which we also control, um, which also has zero dependencies. Um, so that's, that's kind of the rationale there, um, is that I don't want to have to like tear out half the mod when architecture inevitably dies or goes unmaintained. Hey, all right. Uh, so that was the two foreseen questions um, that I had. So let's go to the um, the question list. So the first list, uh, first question was an architecture question. So I'm just gonna skip that. Uh, oops. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, okay. I just. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, one second. I wrote it down. Easiest thing is to put it on a book and throw it in. Just yeah, yeah. I put it. In, I put it in the. You want me to put it in the hopper so you can read it yourself? Uh, yes. Yeah, please. do that. All right. Um, We've got about 25 minutes left. We want to be finished about five minutes before the hour, just so you guys know. Yeah, cool. Um, so the next question is, for the purposes of learning, 
uh, would you recommend porting from one loader to the other and back before using multi-loader? Um, I would, that just sounds like extra work, honestly. Um, I don't know what you mean by, by learning. Uh, this multi-loader thing is really necessary for, or it's only usable for mods that relies mostly on vanilla, right? If a lot of your code has to be platform specific, I don't see a point in multi-loader. But if you want to be multi-loader from the start, then you could definitely start with it and um, and go from there. You don't have to start on one end and go to the other and then come back. That just that sounds like extra work for you. And one thing on this note to mention is is that Darkhacks actually has a multi-loader GitHub template. Um, that has this all set up, so you can just clone it and start writing a new uh, cross-platform mod. All right. Um, so next one's another architecture question. Uh, another architecture question. Um, what are some unique challenges you have had to deal with when it comes to registering? Um, press the press the green. Oh, sorry. Stop messing with jukeboxes. Nobody's yeah, messing so with jukeboxes. Yeah, so by by registering, I'm assuming y'all mean uh, like registries. So yeah, I, I can talk about it. So Forge uses has their own Forge registry system, and then Fabric and Quilt kind of use the vanilla API. Um, what we do is we just kind of um, the uh, okay. So for for Forge, there's these registry events where you have to like do your registrations when the specific event fires, right? Um, so what we do is we have this block of code in in the XPlat module, the cross-platform module. What it does is it takes a by consumer of ID and the thing you want to register, and it just calls that consumer with everything, all the blocks you want to and items um, that you want to register. And so in the Forge code, we have a event handler for registry event dot block. So then we just call mod blocks dot submit all block registrations, and then we pass it a lambda that calls the Forge API. And the same same thing happens for Fabric and for all the other registries essentially. Um, okay. What's the most frustrating inconsistency between Forge and Fabric as an XPlat abstraction? Um, let me I can think off the top of my head, but I can pull up the, the X, IXPlat abstractions class very quickly and <laughs> skim through it. Um, there isn't much, I think. Um, I guess capabilities. Um, so yeah, I guess inventories are kind of in that class of issues. So like Forge has capabilities and Fabric has nothing really. Like there's there's we use cardinal components on on the Fabric side for internal stuff. Um, it's kind of annoying because you have to kind of do everything twice, but um, it's not too bad, I think. Uh, what else? Let's scroll. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't think like there's a lot. There's like a random grab bag of methods in this in this interface, but things aren't very egregious. I feel like um, nothing's really super hacky. Yeah. Um, okay. This is is it pronounced? What's the pronunciation of the mod? And the answer is whatever you want. <laughs> I say botania with the O sound. But if you want to pronounce it like botany, like bot botania, uh, I don't know. That, it, that's more awkward. So I, I think most people say botania, but whatever you want. <laughs> um, okay, next thing is what is a funny thing you've run into with when making a multi loader? Um, can't really think of anything off the top of my head. Uh, it's just the usual bugs. That happened. I mean, I, I had a separate bug tracker for when porting to Fabric for the first time. If you if you're really interested, you can just read that to see what we ran into the first time around. 
Um, but I don't, I can't really recall anything particularly funny. Okay, next is what 1.7.3 beta port one. Uh, the answer is never. <laughs> um, all right, next question is from your point of perspective, uh, point of view, how cool are the members of the Batania team? Uh, very cool. <laughs> everyone, everyone in Violet, uh, Violet Moon is pretty cool. Uh, so you should come hang out in our Discord. Um, all right, next thing. How do you deal with the differences between platforms for cross-platform down calls? And there was a bit more about like how different it is. I think this kind of is the same as the previous question. Um, things aren't very egregious. Um, there's some things that are annoying, like the capabilities, but um, oh, I guess there. I I'm reading the method, the interface now, and there's there's a couple methods that forge patches from a static method into an instance method. So I have to do a platform specific call when it could have been in a, a cross platform call. But the, honestly, that's that's not really a big hackiness kind of thing. It's just a minor annoyance. Um, so yeah, it's 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 more it's pretty simple as long as your mod is mostly reliant on vanilla only. Um, okay, so Fizz says, what was one of the good things to come out of the multi-loader port for the mod and one of the worst things? So I think the best thing, right, is it's available on Fabric and Quilt uh, for everyone to enjoy. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that's the biggest thing, right? There's more players uh, can enjoy the mod. And in terms of like bad things, I can't really, I can't really think of it any, right? So if we had gone not using multi-loader and like two branches for every version merging back and forth, that would be my answer, right? Um, I don't know how long I would have lasted doing that without before burning out, but with multi-loader where we have one code base for all, or basically all logic, it's it's pretty easy. Um, so it's it's been a really good time. Um, I've really enjoyed the fact that we can play Batania on Fabric in Quilt now. Um, uh, next is, from Anonymous, is, <laughs> is Batania a tech or magic mod? To that, I say, grab a lexicon, open it, and read the first page. Um, OK, so next is, not a question, but I'm low key interested in doing a beta 173 port. Um, no guarantees. And to that, I say good luck. Uh, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> all right. Any other live questions? Because that's all for the books. Good luck. Uh, one more. Uh, <laughs> that's all. That uh, might take a second to go through. I don't know how the system works, but I don't see any. Oh, here we go. If it weren't for multi-loader, would Batania currently be on Fabric or Forge? Um, so before we went to multi-loader, there was a Fabric port. It was just separate branches, right? So it would have existed, though the maintenance overhead of that would have been really high. So I don't know how long I would have lasted like maintaining that in that state, right? Um, so I think like burnout is a real thing, and modders get burnt out all the time. So I, it, I wouldn't say it was for sure, but like if I had to keep doing the old merge things everywhere all the time workflow, that would like me burning out on one of the two would probably be a lot more likely. And if I had to, at that time, if I had to drop one, it would probably have been fabric um, just because Forge is Batania's original uh, player base and the player base is larger there. Um, just in the interest of that, right? Um, but now we have multi-loader, so everything is happy and good, right? All right, cool. All right, anything else? Oh, one more. Uh, 
There's like Guess I, I have to wait a while for it to they're load. Just, they're just they're just <laughs> slow because of the TPS. Maybe you lo maybe the question got lost. No, I can see I, don't, I, I can don't see, see two anything. books coming in. All right. The only item transport we have is create conveyor belts. So oh, the yeah. takeaway is low. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One of them's just coming. Uh, is Vasky a modder by Neat? Luck. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> um, okay. Are there undiscovered Easter eggs in the mod? I saw some funny file names when looking through the jar. Uh, not that I know of. I mean, Batania has the wing password, but that's been known for a while and hasn't been changed. Though we're I might change it later. later. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's like the only hidden thing Batania has. There's also these, um, these tiny potatoes. We have a system where you can use resource packs to add custom potatoes um, with specific, if you name them specifically, you can have different models for them. Um, I guess these count as Easter eggs, but it's not really a hidden thing. You can just go see all of them. But yeah. Um, can you foresee? Okay, next one is Can you foresee any possible reason to stop using multi loader? Um, not really. Uh, the, the only dependency this has over the old way was something called Vanilla Gradle, which is what the cross platform module uses to decompile Minecraft. But I think that's pretty well maintained because Sponge uses it. Um, so unless that dies, but uh, that's that's not likely, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. So Jared says you can also replace Vanilla Gradle with Loom. So I think we're pretty pretty well covered in terms of that dependency. And I guess one thing is I'll, I'll address um, that I thought of here is in this system, like how easy is it to temporarily go back to one loader only, right? Let, let's say um, Forge, uh, Forge, Forge released 119 pretty fast this time, but let's say for some reason Forge is slow with some version again. Um, is it going to hold up everything? Uh, and the answer is no, because the way you specify the modules I can just comment out one line, basically, and it'll just disable and not compile the Forge side of things. And then I can do the, the cross-platform part and the fabric part, um, and then re-enable the Forge part later. So it's not, it's not like I have to disentangle everything, or I have to wait for both uh, platforms at the same time. Cool. Uh, anything else? That's it. Uh, yeah, how hard would it be to add another loader to multi-loader? Um, not very hard. Uh, so basically how the Gradle hacker who works is it takes the cross-platform module and essentially like pastes it into the loader, um, the platform-specific module, and then compiles all of it as that platform. Um, so as long as that platform, that mod loader, supports compiling mode map code, which it probably should, um, then it's it's not going to be an issue to support new things. Um, I guess one thing that I thought of when um, at this point was let's let's say for example we want to support quilt uh, explicitly, right? Well, quilt is very similar to fabric, so there might be like some weirdness where there we have to find a way of sharing code between fabric and quilt um, specifically. Um, so it's just like another level of of indirection in that graph. In that diagram I showed with uh, xplat in the middle, you just have another fabric and quilt, and then fabric and quilt off of that. Um, next is, what do you do if you're developing for a version or platform without Moj map? Um, that's your problem <laughs> at this point. Like this whole setup kind of hinges on Moj map or yarn if you want to hack hack around. So yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it hinges on a common mapping. So you need to have a set of names that can be used everywhere. Um, yeah, that, I think that's the most important thing that enabled this, um, this whole effort. Um, in the future, will Batania affect the trout pup? What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, what else? So there's a question about vsauce1.ogg. You have to ask the qu uh, the court team. Uh, I don't I don't know anything about court. Um, yeah. So what about different Minecraft versions? Uh, for that, we're still using branches because Batania and um, Batania usually focuses on the latest vanilla version. Um, we just don't have the time or attention to devote to multiple at the same time. So we just do branches for, for different Minecraft versions. Um, and I guess like multi-loader doesn't really shield you from, from one of the problems with doing multiple Minecraft versions is that Mojang changes things, right? <laughs> so you, you have to abstract on another axis, basically. So instead of having a, a one-dimensional axis of, of platform, you have to do platform times Times version, which is which sounds pretty terrible. Um, yeah, basically <laughs> a terrible matrix. Um, could this work with loaders with very different methods of loading? Um, probably, yeah, because as I said, what it, what we do is basically we paste the the cross platform module into the loader specific module and then compile it um, all at once. So. As long as you can set it up in a Gradle subproject, it should work. Um, favorite multi-loader mod other than Matania? This is a cheat question, but Petroli. <laughs> Petroli is also multi-loader um, because uh, Matania is multi-loader. But I actually don't know. Um, I don't know if Darkhacks or um, uh, Jared, no, if anyone else is multi-loader. Oh, hex casting. Hex casting is, is multi-loader. Um, so, yeah, check out hex casting. It's pretty cool. Uh, I have a question. And it's multi-loader. <laughs> so, I don't, besides those couple, I don't know who else is, is doing multi-loader quite yet. Um, if I explicitly support Quilt, would an fixed? abstraction of having XPlat for Fabric and Quilt, or would I simply re-implement? Uh, I guess it depends on how much they defer, right? If it's, I think right now, um, my current plan is just to use Fabric as long as Quilt supports it, um, because we actually don't use that much of the platform. Like the bits of Fabric API that we do use, it's pretty... It's like the pretty easy stuff. So that's the current plan right now is just to support Quilt via Fabric. Um, yeah. In the future, if they diverge significantly, we can rethink that um, or rethink like dropping support for one, uh, for Fabric or something. Um, but that that's I think that's a ways off. Um, it says, how much of Batania uses vanilla MC functions? Um, this is just a joke question, but there is a place in Batania where you can run an MC function, and that's after the pure daisy finishes. There, you can run an arbitrary function, and we'd use that. <laughs> it's just a funny, funny point. Anyways, anything else? Um, okay, yeah. If you are using mixins more often, does this reduce the ability to interact with other mods? Um, I think Batania is pretty standalone um in that like i guess like we don't really go into uh integrate with other mods um it's usually like other mods come integrate with batania so i i don't know i can't really answer this question from an add-on point of view uh, for us it's the only thing is we need to fire events right like petrally or batania has something called has various events for like the mana network, for example, and we just fire it once on each platform. Um, yeah, it's it's not that big of a thing, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't exclude it being a problem 
but just I haven't done enough to have an answer there. Um, next is, would I be interested in a dedicated quilt port to take advantage of new quilt tech? Um, I mean, I'm open to it. Uh, the thing is, like, Britannia is so slow moving, or like, because we're feature complete, I'm, it's like, I don't know what we would need that quilt has that fabric doesn't right now, right? Because our needs are pretty, um, our, our needs are pretty conservative, right? So if you have something in mind that you think like quilts implementation of is really, really good, uh, let me know and I'll think about it. Yeah. Um, anyone else? All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. Come uh, go. Wait, check I out have one the... more. Oh, someone. It's D nine. One second. Think. Ah, crap! The fingers. Uh, it's in here. Oh wait, the thing is down. Okay. I I, I threw it on the, the finger. Stage. Oh, you threw. Okay. Stop! Stop shooting me. Uh, I can't. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person who keeps shooting. Okay, if I got the urge to one day add a large feature or a system to Batania, are you no longer feature complete? What would that look like? Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, I mean, Batania has been getting like new flowers every so often and new minor features. Um, I don't know if anything big would come up. I guess the... One of Vasky's like original design, like inspirations for Batania, was hit, like basically paraphrase was by the end game of Batania you should basically like have voxel sniper like as in survival uh, for building and stuff, um, and that didn't really materialize. There's some building tools in Batania, but not many. Um, so that could be one thing. <laughs> um, voxel sniper is just a is an old server plugin, or what was it for? I think it was light loader, um, is what it was written for, where you could like do lots of advanced world editing in in game. It's kind of like world edit, but more advanced. Yeah. Hey Willie, do you work with the uh, Pekuri as well? With who? Do you work with Pekui? I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Oh, Pekui? Like the si the player size thing? Um, oh, not Pekui. The Patchouli, sorry. Patchouli. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the book mod that also is part of uh, Violent Moon. And yeah, I, I, maintain, I maintain that as well. Um, it's much smaller and easier to maintain than Botania. Like, most of the time, whenever I port it, it's basically like, Oh, Batania needs it now, so now I have to do that. Um, so for Patchouli, it's like it's pretty low maintenance. Yeah. Are there any chances that you might try and make it work without advancements? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm asking that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it was it's it was like a kind of a it's it's a way of leveraging the vanilla system. Like I, I'd rather fix vanilla advancements to not suck, than <laughs> move Patrulli away from advancements. Fair <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we need to wrap it up so we can set up for the next one. Thanks for that, Willie. All right. Thanks, everyone. Come visit our booth. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Just peaced out. Thanks for that. All right, everyone. Um, the next one is the Modrinth Q and A. It's in about seven minutes, so feel free to hang out or disappear or whatever you want to do. I'm just gonna get it set up. I don't know if they're here yet. <laughs>